It was hot last weekend in the air and on the pitch. Some fantastic games to review on the show today. Highlights coming up in just a moment. CAF TV back for another week. Hey folks, I'm Alex Bastiavansky. Honored that you can tear your eyes away from that little tournament taking place over in Europe to join us for a half an hour today. Brett Mosen, technical director for both CAF and Next Gen Soccer, is going to join me here in the studio shortly to discuss what Next Gen is and the fantastic new association they have with CAF. First though, CAF Supergroup highlights. I'm going to kick things off with the under 14 group. And you know, Bree Academy were the big story last week as they bounced back from a 12 0 trouncing the week before to come away with a 4 2 win. Brampton Elite was the opposition this time around, and they were intent on making sure a winning streak wasn't in the cards for Bree FC. CAF Supergroup highlights now brought to you by Leica Sports. Leica, your passion, our commitment. Brampton had yet to win so far in Supergroup action, so actually trailed Bree in the standings, but they came out gunning. Fifth minute, Adebola Taiwo in tight. Nice stop by Cass and Vithenage, though. Seconds later, Vithenage uh, makes another nice stop, but nobody picks up Taiwo, who's there, and he goes top shelf. One zip for Brampton Elite Bree. Gets it back, though, off the long free kick here. Defensive miscue by Elite. Daniel Miscelli all knotted up at one apiece as he slides it in for the nice goal. Just two minutes later, though, Taiwo, this guy had a game, dances around the keeper here, just waits him out and puts it home. Branton regains the lead. They are up 2-1. Two, two, the second half, though, Bree once again bounces back. 49th minute, Miscelli. Plays, give and go, takes the return feed, slots it home. Nicely done. Bree nodding it up at two apiece. The very next minute, though, Luke Crilly pounces on the Bree defensive miscue here. Walks right in, puts it home. And Elite up again. Three to two, and uh, they keep on coming. Do Elite 56 minute. Great stop by Vithenich here. But Ty Woe right there to pounce again, and that is the hat trick. Elite doubling up Brie for two moments later. Uh, elite player dropped in the box here. Penalty kick, Dylan Candelaria squeezes it home. 5-2 B-Town then just before full time. Xavier Valverde uh, cut down to the box for Brie. So it's a penalty kick, but Alberta Sosa in goal says, uh-uh, not on my watch. Nice stop by the elite keeper. So it finishes up 5-2. Alberto Sosa had a bit of inside information when it came to that penalty kick. He previously played for Bree Academy and shared his strategy with us for the penalty after the game. With penalties, it's uh, you never know where it's going to go, and these are my old team, so I thought, okay, well, I remember how they used to shoot on me in practice, and especially him. He, he didn't really like to put it to the sides because he was scared he would always miss. So I faked to the left, and I stayed in the middle because that's what he used to do in every practice with his penalties. So I guess I got really lucky there. We came out really strong. It's my old team, so I told them, you know, we have to go out there. We have to have a winning spirit. And uh, Dylan and our defense did a lot of work. Also at the top, Addy, really appreciate what they did. Well, of all the games ADP under 14 has played so far this year, the closest any team has stayed with them so far was a 2-0 defeat. That team was Chantilly back in week one in a great game that was tight throughout. And it's an indication of just how dominant ADP has been this season as they've absolutely steamrolled opponents so far. Last Sunday, they faced Chantilly once again, who were bent on revenge after that week one defeat. ADP threw three games heading into this one. Three wins, 22 goals scored, not a single one allowed. Early though, Chantilly presses in tight here, but they just can't slot it home. 13th minute, ADP doing what they do best, which is scoring goals. Great stop by the Chantilly keeper here. Uh, but Matteo Lonardi right there to put it home, and it's one zip ADP. Uh, Chantilly, good chance of their own soon afterwards. Uh, Ajani Leslie stopped, though, by the ADP keeper, and then an even better chance here. Hunter Oakley steals the ball, but big save by Nicholas Velasquez. Seconds later, Oakley on the rush again. Uh, Velasquez comes out of his net, but this time he gets bailed out by Giacomo Campo with the goal line stand right there to prevent the goal. 35th minute, uh, ADP 
get back on the offensive. Cheyenne Omrani on the wing. He is going to ring it off the iron here, but Ethan Menchie's there to tap it home. ADP go up by a deuce, taking advantage of their opportunities. One more good chance before the half. Chantilly scrambling to get back here, but the cross is just out of the reach of Shane Nazar. And ADP added two more in the second half for the decisive 4-0 victory. And the boys in blue through four games now still yet to concede a single goal. Welcome back. London elites have been impressive thus far in under-14 supergroup play. Heading into last weekend, uh, the only loss they'd suffered was to that aforementioned ADP juggernaut. Sunday, they hit the pitch against another calf powerhouse, Epic. And as you'll see, they were handed a golden opportunity just a few minutes in. The question was, could they take advantage of a shorthanded squad? Epic, three points up on ADP heading into this one, but they've also played one more game, and they start well just four minutes in. Just watch Mark Anthony Cololancia go to work here. Absolute stunner. One zip Epic. Moments later, though, Epic get into hot water. Miscommunication there, and yep, this is a red card for the keeper for handling the ball outside the box. Epic down to 10 men just six minutes in. And London tries desperately to take advantage. Logan Reich coming close. Not quite, though. And then it's Reich with the free kick. He's absolutely deadly from that distance, believe it or not. But fantastic stop by the epic keeper. Jalen Logie from 25 yards out. London parents were screaming that that was in. Well, let's slow it down and blow it up a bit. Take another look. You'll see it go off the bar and hits directly on the yellow line. So looks like it was a good call by the referee second half you gotta hand it to epic they just refuse to sit back philip minsky beautiful header elias Himaris, even better save there london pressing for a breakthrough thomas ribeiro out front eh just can't squeeze it home and he was getting yeah pretty frustrated then finally in the 58th minute though the dam breaks connor miller out front tucks it home scores london knots things up at one apiece and then in the 66th minute, they hit again. A little miscue right here. Bounces right to Logan Reich. He does not miss those from in tight. And London looks like they've got it under control. 2-1 two, uh, lead and a man up. But in the 68th minute, Matthew Plath, who just got back from scoring the winning goal for Ontario at the Danone Cup, plays hero for his club team as well. That ties it up. And that is how it finished. Much credit to Epic, who played down a man for almost the whole game, yet pulled out the tie. Matthew Plath, the guy with the tying goal, with his thoughts on the tight game. We played very well. It was very a team effort, and we pushed uh, through. And if we didn't push, we wouldn't have gotten the result that we did. Well, to the under-16s we had now, the super group has not been kind to newcomers Pace FC so far. Heading into last Saturday through two games, Two losses, no goals scored, 10 against, ouch. And their task got no easier in game three as they hit the pitch against undefeated Dragon Force. Uh, but Pace came up with their best showing of the season to date. Dragon Force were actually undefeated through three games heading into this contest, but uh, they were under fire early on. Alessandro Procaccini was just coming up huge for Dragon Force. Massive stop on Pace right there. And it just kept coming basically one after another. Seconds later, uh, Max Ferrari in tight denied by Procaccini. And then moments after that, this time it was on Daniel Frazzoni Procaccini, man of the match so far for Dragon Force. A DFC, first chance they got, first good chance. They pounce. Tiago De Jesus, one zip for Dragon Force taking advantage of their opportunity second half pace are finally rewarded for their hard effort max ferrari snake bitten in the first half not here though that is pace's first goal of the season and it's a beauty as they nodded up at one apiece zach vesnever had to be on his toes in goal for pace as he makes the save off the free kick right there ferrari not content with a single point for pace as he tries his luck but uh, procaccini 
smothers the ball. Uh, late in the contest, Jason Ferreira, golden chance here. Vesnever coming up with the massive game saver right there. Dying seconds now. Uh, Maximus Manu might have the coolest name in calf. Unfortunately, lacking the touch on that play. So pace. Picks up not only its first goal of the season, but its first point as well. Head coach Chris Speller, proud of his boys who struggled out of the gate this season. Boys worked really hard. It's been a tough, tough start for us. It's a, it's a tough league. The Super Group's a fantastic league to play in. Uh, we're learning our way, so today was a good result for us. You know, I'm very happy with the boys. You can hear them in the background. They're, they're pretty happy about the game. Something you know, it doesn't matter who scores the goal, uh, because at the other end of the field, the, the goalie's making the save. So, I don't like to pick out favourites. Um, they all played really well today. Okay, one more under 16 game. Chantilly were taking on last year's national champions, Epic FC, and they surprised the champs early on. Mohamed Shamki, great work here, and he blasts it home. Chantilly up one zip early. Epic gets one back off a penalty here as Salmaz of Farrell strokes it home and makes it 1-1, then Ronaldo Marshall, uh, even closely marked from 20 yards out, forget about it, just too good. And it's 2-1 for Epic, and they added another goal in the second half to make it 3-1. Chantilly nearly get one back, Ricardo Moniz in close here, denied. Great stop by the Epic keeper. Um, so Epic remained the kings of the under-16 group for the moment through four games, an unblemished record, while Chantilly drops their second contest of the season. Welcome back to CAF TV. Uh, joining the studio now by, there's a lot of exciting stuff happening right now with CAF and NextGen. So joining me in the studio to talk about it is Brett Mosen, who's the technical director for both NextGen and for CAF, actually. He's a busy guy. So uh, <laughs> thanks for taking the time and joining us in the studio. Um, you're the technical director of both, but you've been around the toronto soccer scene for a while now i think a lot of people who are watching who are involved with soccer know who you are but for those who don't um just give us a bit of an idea about your soccer background um well i'm originally from london obviously and um didn't do much coaching in in london but uh I got my coaching licenses there started there then moved to the u.s where i lived in the u.s for 16 years coached 12 years in the usl professional leagues um and then uh, came across here to uh, Toronto and uh, coached with the Toronto Lynx. And I've been here for 12 years now. I also was uh, technical director at Oakville Soccer Club for six years. Right. And um, uh, still doing my Curva um, Coaching Academy. I've uh, been with Curva Coaching since uh, the 1990s. Right. So it's quite a so few Which years. ties in nice to NextGen then as well with the Curva Coaching. Absolutely. So NextGen is something we've mentioned a lot on the show over the last few weeks. Uh, some very exciting stuff coming up with NextGen. But tell us the NextGen, exactly, what is NextGen Canada, NextGen USA? Well, NextGen uh, uh, Canada is, um, is coming across from the US, obviously. They've had a program there that's running, been running now for two years. And the success we've seen from that program uh, has been something that obviously attracted me and uh, to, to the program itself. And it's just something that we think is, is needed here. It's a concept of the best with best getting the best players from each club uh, to come into a training environment, um, get identified, go on select tours that uh, travel across to high profile tournaments mm -hmm. in Belgium, Spain, Portugal, Argentina, the UK. Some real what a quality, thrill for the kids. Fantastic, yeah. a fantastic opportunity for them. Um, it's important that the best players from uh, around uh, get to train with the best players. Absolutely, they get to test um, each other against exactly, one another. Exactly, without any coaching yeah. at all, there's development attached to that. Mm -hmm. So that's really what it's about. Um, the partnership with CAF, uh, tell us a bit about that and, and why it is that uh, CAF was so attractive to NextGen. Well, I've got a good friendship uh, with uh, Phil Arnardi. Um, so uh, Phil seemed an obvious uh, choice to me to with what he's done here with CAF. It's uh, pretty impressive. And um, I just thought it would be a great start for something like NextGen to get in there. And um, so I approached Phil to see whether or not this was a program mm -hmm. that we could implement into, into CAF and help their members get the benefits uh, from it. 
and um, he bought into it straight away. Um, he's, uh, he's got a great vision for the game, uh, so it was a good, uh, a good partnership there. He's extremely, when he talks about it, he gets passionate. He's, oh, he's, he's passionate really guy. excited about it. And, uh, well, Phil's a passionate guy as it is, but I mean, <laughs> especially about this. The camps that you guys held back in April and in May yep. um, were a huge success uh, with CAF kids. There yep. were, what, I think we said about 200 or over 200 yep, just kids that actually ended up coming out to the camps. Um, and you guys got to identify players. Uh, some of the players were chosen for the next gen team, which, as you said, does some traveling and stuff. Yeah. Um, just, just talk about that. I mean, was that the main purpose behind the camps? What were the purpose behind? Yeah, it? The, the the idea was uh, an introduction to next gen, uh, obviously, and um, for us to really get a good idea of um, the caliber of player that, that that's playing within. So coaches nominated players to come in, and um, over over that period of time, all we did really was let them play and identify them and, and uh, tier them. And from that, I think there's something like nine or 12 players that were selected to go on the select tours overseas. There's a few boys right now in Spain and Portugal. Um, one boy played in the, uh, or two boys actually played in the um, under 13 um, Champions League uh, for, uh, in Belgium. Wow. Uh, so it was a great opportunity for them. So it was really um, an introduction for the CAF members to come out. Parents were there. Um, they sat in on the classroom sessions with, with the character of champions, which is a very unique program. And there's a huge camp uh, starting up on Monday, the Next Gen and CAF International Development Festival. I said that correct, right? That's correct, right. yeah. That's uh, correct. Starting on July 4th, uh, going through to the 7th, uh, taking place in Oakville. Exciting stuff, some incredible coaches you guys have coming over. Talk about the event. Yes, it's a great event, a great opportunity for the coaches to um, showcase themselves in front of these international coaches. Coaches coming from Argentina, from the UK, Scotland, uh, Belgium, France, um, Holland. So it's a, a really great opportunity for them. So it's not just coming out and enjoying a camp, but every every time they're on the field there, it's a showcase for the players. The, the team these guys are, have been associated with, and it's incredible. Yeah. Uh, you got the Chelsea guys there, which my dad's going to be extremely happy about <laughs> as a Chelsea fan, by the way. Um, so this is a great chance for kids to, to as you said, train against the best and yeah. also get coached by some of the best as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's an exciting time for them. Yeah. If people want to find out more about there's just a couple different places mm -hmm. that they can go. Uh, they can go to, would they go to the Next Gen USA website? Would yeah, be the Next best Gen to go USA to? Um, and go under the International Development Festivals. Just okay. click on that and it give them a list of information. Yeah, and there's it. some great Next Gen videos as well that you can watch from uh, from that. And also calfsoccer.com yep. right here. You're a busy guy. <laughs> we appreciate you coming in and joining us in the studio. Thanks Thank, a lot. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, more Calf TV coming up in just a sec. Welcome back to CAF TV. We turn our attention now to the Open Group where BSC Academy was searching for answers on Saturday. And since grabbing three points back in their May 29th opener, the boys from Burlington had dropped three straight, including a 6-0 spanking the week before at the hands of Toronto, Croatia. Epic was on tap this time. Unfortunately for BSC, the end result was exactly the same. The only blemish on Epic's record heading into this was a 5-2 loss to Croatia back on June 5th, and they start out well. Samer Hamadi with one of the goals of the week doing all the work himself and tattooing it into the back of the net. One zip, Epic. And the boys in orange extend their lead in the second half. Jordan Simpson does all the heavy lifting here and gets it out front. His teammate right there to tap at home, and Epic go up 2-0. Moments later, it's Simpson again. Nice little flick into the back, and then it goes 3 0. Uh, BSC grabbed one goal to make it 3 1, but then it's Simpson again. And yes, it is in poor marking by Burlington there. And uh, 4 1 Epic, and yes, salutes all around for a job well done. So Epic have now won three straight. Epic coach and Toronto soccer legend Ricky Titus with his thoughts on his team's play on an extremely hot day on the pitch. Um, I think the players had a, a difficult time with the, uh, the heat and uh, it, you know it takes a little bit of energy out of them so uh, the, the strategy was to sit in our half, take a little pressure and counter attack and it worked pretty good in the second half. Well even more snake bitten than BSC has been Toronto Atomic. A root canal would be more fun than the season Atomic has had so far. Through five games they are the sole remaining open group squad 
yet to register a single point. Most of their games have been tight. One goal affairs where the ball just wasn't really bouncing their way. And unfortunately, that was the case once again on Saturday against Toronto, Croatia. Croatia had yet to lose so far through their first four games and Atomic catches them napping in the first half. Michael Munemo slots at home, goal, one zip T.O. Atomic looking good early on, but then Peiro Manalo gets chopped down inside the box. Atomic hates the call naturally, but nothing they can do, but hold on for a sec, Manalo from the spot. Huge save by Dennis Bilski. And then on the follow-up too, great goalkeeping. Uh, alas, in the second half, Manalo gets his revenge. From the top of the box here, he absolutely kills it. And it's 1-1, and then it's Manalo again as he gets stopped here. But Dennis Porich right there on the doorstep to knock it home. Heartbreak for Toronto Atomic. Once again, they just can't buy a point. Croatia pulls out the 2-1 win to extend Atomic's winless streak to five games. Daniel Jaksic with his thoughts on Croatia's play. Atomic Slack came out very hard. You know, they got the first goal on us. Uh, they were pushing hard. Uh, took some time for our guys to get going. Uh, but once they started to get going, we had a couple of changes. Uh, you know, we got the victory at the end 2-1, uh, which is nice for our boys. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they fought hard right through it. So uh, the main thing is never stop until the end, right? Okay, one more game from the Open Group to tell you about uh, June 25th, Supernova and Branton City playing to a 2-2 draw. Let's take a look at the league table where all the teams currently sit, starting with the U14s. Epic, as mentioned, on top of 13 points. Just a point ahead of ADP, but they do have uh, a game in hand, ADP, to catch up. Uh, London Elite in third place with four points. To the under-16 group we go. Epic on top there as well. Dominant so far. Perfect record with 12 points. Dragon Force yet to lose a game as well uh, with eight points. And in third place, Mississauga United uh, with seven points so far. Into the open group we go. Toronto, Croatia on top. Yet to lose a game through uh, five played. Epic in second, close behind with 10 points. And Supernova in third place right now. Atomic, as mentioned, still yet to register a point. Okay, time for the CAF. Countdown, the top five plays of the week. Number five, Branton's Abodelo Taiwo uh, outruns the defender, outweights the keeper, and slots at home. One of three he had on the day for Elite. Number four, same game. Breeze Daniel Maselli playing give and go, takes the return feed, floats it home. Beautiful goal for Maselli and uh, Bree. Number three, Epic Samer Hamadi doing all the work against BSC here. Finally, he just absolutely tattoos at home for the beautiful goal. Uh, number two, Epic under 14's Mark Anthony Kolalancia packing some dynamite in that right foot as he just kills it. Top shelf, beautiful goal. Normally that'd be probably number one, but this week uh, it was so good. We're going to have to include all three of these. DFC's Alessandro Procaccini, three massive stops, one after the other against Pace. Seriously, these all happened within about a couple minutes of each other. Gorgeous saves, Alessandro. You get our cat plays of the week. And that is it for this week. Uh, no games this weekend as we all celebrate Canada Day, but a full slate on tap for next week. And for the schedule, you can head to calfsoccer.com. Uh, on Twitter, at calf underscore football. And of course, don't forget Facebook, Canadian Academy of Football. Enjoy the long weekend, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.